Tell Me About It is brought to you by Don Franklin Auto of Glasgow, an extreme health club. James Brown with 104thescore.com here on Tell Me About It on the Glasgow EPB Channel 6. We air Thursdays at 6 p.m. You can catch it online on the Glasgow EPB YouTube channel. Uh, we call the regular channel the local channel. And today, Trevent Hayes can't be here. He's hanging out in Lexington at the Boys Basketball State Tournament. Uh, by the time you see this, most of the first round games will be done. But as we're recording it, we don't know. I do have a special guest with me today. His name is Billy Buford. He's a 1970 graduate of Glasgow High School. Is that how that worked out? Yeah. Uh, I, I told him I think he has a rare distinction in this neck of the woods because he played on the 1968 Glasgow State Championship team. He was a sophomore. The team was loaded with seniors. So he got to play on that team. And then in 1973, he played in the NCAA tournament title game against powerhouse UCLA and uh, Bill Walton, who had maybe the greatest game we've ever seen in the NCAA tournament. That's true. So what we're going to do is we're going to do this in two segments. I'm going to talk to Mr. Buford here about his time growing up in Glasgow, playing basketball at Glasgow High School. A lot of people think of that window from about 1960 to 1970 as a golden age of high school basketball, not just in Glasgow, but in South Central Kentucky. So he got to see all of that firsthand. And in the second segment, we're going to talk about the NCAA tournament and his experiences there and just some things related to uh, college basketball. So let's start off. Um, you grew up in Glasgow. Uh, I'm going to guess you went to Bunch early on as you were growing up. Is that how that worked out? Yeah, well, I lived, uh, my house was right at the corner of Bunch and uh, Lewis Street. Okay. Right down the corner. Yeah. So you just walked across the street, basically, yeah, yeah, didn't yeah, you, yeah, when yeah, you were growing up? Yeah, right, 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 right down the street. Now, I don't think, maybe a lot of people don't realize this, Bunch Blunch was the was the black high school, was the right. black school. It was mm -hmm. a K-12 kind of school, right, right when you were growing right. up. Uh -huh. And uh, in the late 50s, early 60s, uh, some folks came through the school uh, by the name of, you had some hunters and some wells, and I think even oh, some webs wow. that came yeah, through. Yeah, buddy. And so, I, how often, when you were growing up, did you walk across the street there and watch those guys play basketball? Well, I was I was probably pretty fortunate because I was the only one because uh, we lived up on Broadway at the time, mm -hmm. and uh, I was the only one that had a basketball. Okay. And uh, so uh, Charles Hunter was called Big Game. Yep. And uh, Big Game uh, was real close to my mom and everything, so. Uh, he would come and take me and my ball to the park down behind Bunch. So that's how I got to get there. And so, so you had the ball. He's, so he, I, he said, I'm coming to get your ball, but you can come with yes, me. Yes, I come with you. So, and, uh, and, and uh, uh, man, to see uh, those guys uh, go at it on that asphalt back there behind the gym, uh, behind the gym. It's, just, it's just a phenomenal Feet, man. Them, them guys played, had chain knits mm -hmm. at that time. And, uh, you know, I, I would go up on the merry-go-round and kind of watch them. But then it gets so uh, intense that you go sit on the bank. <laughs> and uh, you sit there and watch them, man. And, I mean, they be, go they be going at it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean it, was, it, was, it was take no prisoners. So you, um, that's Twyman Park down there, right? Where right. They, would go, uh -huh. they would go and play. Uh, I think I think they would have, I don't know if we, when you were growing up, but they'd have like a summer kind of games out there, contest kind of thing? Well, see, that, that was before Twyman Park. See, oh, okay. we, had, we had an asphalt uh, goal right behind the, the gym. Oh, okay. So and where you, that little fenced-in area back there behind yeah, the gym yeah, well, yeah, right. Well, you, if you go around, right around the back, uh, it was a program, and mm -hmm. then they had the uh, uh, basketball court. Okay. And that's where they, that's where they, well, now we wasn't, we wasn't down by the creek bank yet. No. Okay. No, we, 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 was, we was back there in the back. Gotcha. And, uh. 
So, so along with you mentioned Charles Hunter, I guess Jerry Wells was out there probably Jerry playing. Jerry Wells, maybe maybe Billy Webb was he old, the older of the Webb brothers at that time? Yeah, like Joe Billy, Joe Lonzo, Billy. Alan Moppin, mm -hmm. uh, um, uh, Charles Butler, uh, Wolf. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, golly, it's uh, let me see, uh, one of the next, uh, Jonathan Lee. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, a lot of guys at the Ford Bridges, you know, they were all, oh, God. So when you when you went out there, so this is when you were, what, about eight, nine, ten years old in that range, like there in the early 60s? Six, seven. I mean, I was, I was going out of the park six, seven. Oh, were you? Okay. Yeah, I wasn't doing nothing but looking, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Wanna be, I was a wannabe. Yeah. So, so did, did that inspire you when you got to see those guys play? Not, not like in those pickup games. Did that inspire you? Like that's what I want to do. I want to grow up and be and play basketball. Yeah, that's how. I mean, that that was it. Mm -hmm. That was it. I mean, it was, it was, it was, it was. You, you ate. You went to school, and you hoop. <laughs> right. Right. And if you and if you wasn't hooping, you were chasing women. <laughs> and I wasn't. I was too awkward to chase women, <laughs> so I was I was in the open. I got you. You know what I mean? Yeah, I was in the open. So in the, I think it was '61, the Blue Hawks went to the state tournament. Well, I think that maybe that was Hunter and Wells' senior yeah. year, uh -huh. junior year maybe it was their junior year. Um, did you? So that was what was the community like in terms of like watching those games over at Bunch because there were some big time games played during that window of time at, at the school. Oh yeah, I mean I remember I remember we used to. I remember when, uh, when uh, I mean Ch Charles Hunter, he was shooting so deep. He looked like he was shooting from the other half, half of the court. <laughs> um, Jerry Wells was was just a beast. Uh, Richard Travis was on that team. Uh, he later went on down to play at uh, at uh, when we moved to Bowling Green mm -hmm. and played for Bowling Green Mustangs. Uh, I remember when uh, they. Uh, Dotson brothers from uh, Princeton came up. They played around, played the Western. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it was, it was, it was, it was, it was, it was watching them hoop. That was, uh, that was the thing. You go to the ball game on uh, when they played, and you watch Charles Hunter and Alan Moppin, and they play hard too. God, they play hard. So, and uh, I think it was the new Glasgow High School, which was the old one now, was built in 1964. Yeah. And I think the school system had already desegregated. It's just Correct. the high school hadn't because yeah. it, wasn't, it wasn't picking up school. Right. Yeah. So, so whenever that school, those kids, I think it was Lonnie Webb maybe, and that bunch came Lonnie over. And Joe Billy. Yeah, yeah, Joe Billy came over to Glasgow High School about 65 or so, 64, 65, somewhere in that window. Uh, and then they immediately went to back-to-back -back state tournaments. Yeah. Did did the energy that was at bunch kind of come to Glasgow High School for, during that window of time? Yeah, because 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 Joe Billy and Lonzo and Milton Dip and them, they were some dogs. Mm -hmm. They were some dogs, and you had Bobby Chapman mm -hmm. uh, and them, and and, and they, they just kind of. I mean, once they found out. What style of ball they were playing? Cause they was getting up and down the floor. Joe Billy jumped by the gym. He didn't fear no. He feared no man. Lonnie was the same way. Uh, they uh, 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 it just kind of caught on, and uh, uh, it was tough going in that box mm -hmm. up there on the hill. I mean, no, you didn't. You didn't come out of that with too many wins. So I, I'm fascinated. You called it a box because it had those those high sides up yeah, there, yeah, and the so benches were like right up against right, the, yeah, the wall. So, yeah, buddy. And you and you shoot and you shoot the deep, deep deep in the corner, and you're liable to go. <laughs> you're liable. You're liable to, to have to get backed up in the wall. But it was, that was a good, 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 good shooting gym too. Lighting was good. Mm -hmm. Floor was good. Uh, it was a it was a, it was a nice place to play. Now, real quick, let's let's talk about that 1968 experience because it was Rex Bailey, Jerry Dunn, uh, uh, Nate Mills, yeah. and and Harry Francis, and those guys, and they were I think they were all seniors, and you were a sophomore on that team. But as I understand, you got called on quite a bit to play on, during the course of that season and in the state tournament. Yeah, I did. Uh, uh, um, 
a lot of times because of my size, I was uh, I was to come in and spell Jerry mm -hmm. a little bit, but, but but because of my quickness, I was able to also guard a a, a four. We call them fours now, mm -hmm. um, and we usually uh, when we started really pressing a lot um, because of my quickness and size that uh, Coach Joe Richards used me a lot in that area, um, which made us a whole lot faster. Yeah. You know. Well, I know, I mean, <clears throat> that was kind of the way you guys played on that team. It was a fast-paced team, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, we didn't have, we just, we just, uh, that was what we did. Yeah. We, uh, we put it on you and, <laughs> and put it on you and put it on you until uh, we couldn't do it no more. And that was just, that was just it. We knew. It wasn't gonna take long, right? You know what I mean. It was uh, uh, once we uh, once we got in it, uh, Coach Richard didn't he didn't like to let it out <laughs> until it was over with. And then <clears throat> once all those guys graduated, uh, I mean, you were kind of the only guy left on the team. What were those last couple of years in high school like? It must have been quite a challenge, just because they were so good for about a four year stretch. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, it's it's. It, I think it was it was it's me trying to. Get my own notch, mm -hmm. um, cause I was I was I was really in a awkward stage. I was I was big, tall, and faced, mm -hmm. and so you know, positional wise, they because of your size, you they felt like you had to pay this spot. Mm -hmm. But my natural ability was not in a center spot; it was a guard spot. Yeah, and uh, so. I was able to work on those skills during the summer, so that I was a lot more versatile when the uh, when the season started. So I had an outside shot, and I could put the ball on the floor and go to the hole. So yeah, you were just forty years ahead of your time, is all. Yeah, I just, I, I, <laughs> as they say, they say now, nah, freaking nature. I was yeah. really freaking freaking nature. You know, you know what I mean? Yeah. All right. Well, this is this is Billy Buford, and we are here on Tell Me About It on. Glasgow EPB Channel 6, the local channel, and we'll be right back. We're going to talk a little bit about the NCAA tournament. It's out of a double team with 13 seconds across the timeline. 11 seconds. It's about over. 20-footer by Simpson, no good. Loose ball, Francis in front court to Bailey. Bailey's layup is good with two seconds. The Scotties win it. The Scotties are the state champions of 1968. Well, how about that? At Don Franklin, we're more than a group of car dealerships. We're hardworking, everyday people of Kentucky. We strive daily to give 110% to our customers, our employees, and our families. We are committed to providing everyone with a safe and reliable vehicle. And we continue our tradition of supporting our local communities. At all 24 dealerships across Kentucky, we will treat you like family. Don Franklin Family of Dealerships, we are Kentucky. Extreme Fitness has doubled in size. Now with over 8,000 square feet of co-ed weights and an upgraded 90 degree sailing therapy pool. The Extreme Fitness Campus also holds the exclusive Extreme Fitness for Women Complex and Extreme Blend Smoothie Bar. You have to experience the variety of classes to realize the impact they have on their clients. Personal training is with the best in the business and is available and tailored to fit individuals. So start your journey today at Extreme Fitness and Health Club. James Brown, 104thescore.com, back here on Tell Me About It on Glasgow EPB Channel 6, the local channel. Uh, Trevent Hayes is up at the state tournament doing some reporting this week, and I got special guests with me. Billy Buford, a unique individual here in Glasgow, Kentucky, played on the state championship basketball team, 68, played in the NCAA tournament title game in 73. We talked about your growing up in Glasgow and high school experience, uh, and how you transitioned your game to get noticed and, and Memphis at that time, Memphis state came calling. Do you, do you remember as you were like junior, senior year, the recruiting process of trying to decide where you might go to college? Well, I remember, I remember, uh, uh probably my senior year. Um, we had a little light dilemma because 
I was, if for me to be able to go to college, I was going to have to change positions. Mm -hmm. And so a uh, decision was made to, for me to, uh, Coach Richards had talked to, talked to me about going to uh, Paducah Community College where Rex went. Yeah. And uh, so that I could learn a different position. Mm -hmm. And so um, we decided to go to Paducah for two years and move me from uh, going from uh, playing down low mm -hmm. to playing out front as a guard. Mm -hmm. And uh, so uh, Coach Beck, Peck at Paducah uh, kind of, uh, you know, saw, saw my talent and, and saw my ability to be able to do that. And so we switched positions right in the middle of the stream, and uh, bam, it was all over. <laughs> I mean, it was, I said, oh, yeah, playing in the front of the goal like this? Oh, yeah. So uh, my eyes did up like a fat red in the cheese factory. I was, I was ready for that thing. So, so when you, so you went to Paducah for a couple of years. Yeah, I went to Paducah for two years, and uh, uh, had we had good success uh, there. Uh, I learned to learned to play the guard position uh, well, and then so when uh, Memphis, when uh, college just started coming, mm -hmm. they found out that well, I, I, I was I could guard a guard or three. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people were getting. Lots of people were playing with three guards now. Yeah. And so that that was an advantage for me going to uh, Memphis. So when you – so you you had two years of Memphis. Is, the way, is that the way it worked uh -huh. out? Yeah. So when you got there, uh, was that the 72-73 yeah. season uh -huh. that the, when you made the run right. in the NCAA tournament? When you got to that team, I was looking. So you played um, – I think it was Larry Finch, right? And he yeah. later coached maybe the Clippers yeah. and a couple of other teams. Uh -huh. And then uh, – but I think – uh, is it Hannon Kennan? Kennan. Yeah. So yeah. he now people may not remember him. Yeah. But I I I've looked it up before. You know, read about him. He was a heck of a basketball player. He's a war horse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Golly, man. That's it. You know. See, they went after. They went after Wynn Westfall, mm -hmm. Larry Kennan, and myself as far as junior college players were concerned. Because Coach Barto needed to fill in some stuff. Mm -hmm. But I was the last one to sign. Okay. Wes and Keenan had already signed. So I was struggling. I was hanging around. I, I didn't know because I, I really wanted to go to Hawaii. That's, that's where I wanted to go. <laughs> yeah, that's where I wanted to go. But uh, a, a, life, a career and a life move. Oh, huh? man, I'll tell you, I was going, oh, yes, sir. So, but I wasn't, wasn't, I wasn't too hipped on Memphis until Coach uh, Coach Bartow, the assistant coach, uh -huh. came up and got me and, and – uh, Brought me down there, and uh, and it was a uh, it was a life changing experience I never seen. I said, "Oh man, this is this is really big time <laughs> here." You know what I mean? Yeah. Sneakers and name in lights and all kind of stuff. And mm -hmm. Mama liked it too because I was about four hours away from yeah from 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 home. Yeah, Hawaii so, had been a heck of a trip for you. Yeah, but I tell you what, I still I, I'm still <laughs> I'm, I'm still mad at Coach Jace because he coming. Messed my trip up. I was afraid I'm going to Hawaii. He messed my trip up. Dirty dog. So whenever you whenever you got there to Memphis, I mean, did you guys know that team was going to be good? No. Okay. No, no, we didn't. We didn't. Man, you, you, you got, you got. Man, we had so many egos. It's unreal. <laughs> right. You got, you got all, you got all Americans. Uh -huh. And then you got Memphis. Well, Rodney was from Memphis. Finch was from Memphis. They played the male roles. Mm -hmm. They were territorial. Uh -huh. You know, then you got these junior college players coming in, and we renegades. You know what I mean? <laughs> we, we, we had no conscience at all. Yeah. We thought we was all this, this gift from God. And then you had these freshmen coming in, and they thought they, they thought they, oh, it was rough. <laughs> it was rough, man. We had some fights. Oh, it was bad. How, how long did it take you guys to, like, kind of jail together as a team? Um, because I was looking, it looked like you had some losses during the course. Now, I think there were six losses total, but there was like two or three during the course of the season yeah, right. that were probably not yeah. great. I think Texas, Texas come in, somebody come in there and beat the dog, dog, do the, <laughs> dog beat us bad. And, you know, we was, I mean, we was, I mean, we were, we were, we were, we were, we had the bell bottoms, mm -hmm. we the stack shoes, <laughs> you know what I mean, the hats. And, Coats and you know we was all dressed up. I mean we were, we thought 
we thought we saw a lot. We thought we was really, really something. Mm -hmm. And uh, they come in and did something pretty good. And uh, so Coach Barto, he uh, he he sits, he sits down and he talked to us. Coach Barto never cussed. Mm -hmm. And uh, he would use words like atrocious. <laughs> we didn't know what he was talking about. <laughs> And we we all be up there cussing the cat on, and Wes answer said, Coach Ross said, you know y'all boys, that language is atrocious, and where's your race and and uh, 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 my buddy Wes looks at Coach Ross and said, are you trying to cuss us back or something? We didn't know what he was saying, you know what I mean? And so, so, but uh, we uh, it it took us. It took us a couple of fights in mm -hmm. practice. Yeah. We had a couple of fights in practice. Uh, uh, Memphis against junior college, and then junior college against freshmen. Uh -huh. And uh, now blood fight, now fist fight, no, we, we weren't playing. Yeah. And uh, then, then we found like that we were uh, in practice one day, for three on two down. Two on one back, and uh, Ronnie was from 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 Memphis. Ronnie Robertson, called him Big Cat, and Big Cat had done busted Kenan in the mouth. And uh, I said, "Oh, he's getting ready to rough up in here today." I said, "I know it." So we came down two on one back, as me and Kenan, and uh, I fled out to the wing, doing a little thing. And Ronnie was in there, and I threw a pass, and Ken Kenan had hands being mind up together. <laughs> and I threw a pass, and Kenan rushed out and caught it. Just caught it with the bad, in the bad air, mid air, and caught it. And I said, uh-oh. And he rose up, and Roy kept rising. And he put the other hand in Ronnie's face, and he pushed that thing. And I looked over at my buddy CJ, I said, it's going to be rough up in there now. <laughs> it's on. <laughs> I knew then that we had we had, we had had one player. Uh -huh. I don't know about the rest of us, <laughs> but we had one that was getting ready to go to war. And I think that, 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 that uh, to me, I think that, that, that kind of let everybody know that well, it's going to be something special. So you guys really jailed, made a run through, was it the OVC? Was that what the Memphis was in at that Missouri time? Missouri Valley. Missouri Valley. It's tough, too. Yeah. So God, guys, it's tough. You guys made a run through that. And then in the NCAA tournament, I, outside of the championship game, it looked like you guys beat everybody by about 20 points. Yeah, we did. We did. We did. We did pretty good. South Carolina. Mm -hmm. Kansas State. Yeah. Beat um, up on Providence like they yeah, stole something. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And then, then you ran into, uh, at that time, UCLA was, I don't know how many championships they were in the run Damn. of winning. They did more about 10. Yeah. God. And then you, Bill Walton, and uh, now, I know you weren't the person assigned to slow down Bill Walton in that championship game. You couldn't have been because you were playing a guard. But he had probably the greatest game ever seen in a college championship. Uh, as you're in the game, what what were your thoughts? Not just yours, but yours as a team as you guys were watching that guy. At halftime, mm -hmm. I said, we got him. Is that right? I said, we got him. I said, they, they going down. And, and and I don't, I mean, it's just, I looked, I looked at this, looked at the game one time after mm -hmm. that. And at that time, you couldn't dunk. Yeah. And we were playing a one, one, two, two zone. Mm -hmm. uh, and there was an off official, which we caught in the, uh, which, which we caught in the, uh, uh, down in Houston. Mm -hmm. And uh, him and Coach Walter didn't get along well. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was a lot of pass that kept going over to Walton that was actually, he was catching it in the cylinder. Uh -huh. And I was, I was on the point of the one, two, two. And I kept telling him, I said, man, he's in the cylinder. He's in the cylinder. And he was just catching it and dropping it off in there. You know, every time we see him. So, I mean, it was, I mean, that wasn't, I mean, that, 
I mean, we was, we was close, six to eight, all the way down through there. Mm-hmm. Um, but, um, um, you know, I, th- I think that that, that contributed mm-hmm. to, 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 you know, to the uh, number of points that he, that he got. Yeah, because, I mean, it was all, not layups, it was yeah. literal, it, was, yeah. it should have been dunks. Yeah, I mean, yeah, but, really, but. really. Because you know, that cylinder, go, it, it runs straight up, straight up to the ceiling. Yeah. And it just kind of, kind of over in there. But now, at halftime, Kenny would tie him up. Mm-hmm. He'd give him all he give him, so. Do you, uh, you guys get together years later, um, not necessarily talk about that game, but with your Memphis players and that kind of stuff? Yeah, we just had, they, they just did a 50-year uh, reunion, which I didn't get to make it, but, um, um, due to some illness, but, you know, we, they bring us back, uh, Every now and then, you know, my teammate, Bill Laurie, mm-hmm. he married Sam Wallace's niece. Oh, is that right? He got so much money in his hand. <laughs> we call him Little Bill. He tight as a tight as beeswax, too. Man. Yeah, man. I'm telling you, you know, and uh, he got private jets and everything. Oh, my God. Oh, God. It's just pitiful, man. <laughs> it's pitiful, man. He won't give up nothing. Either. And, uh, but now we had Doug McKinney. I mean, you know, we had a, we had some, we had some, we had some guys that really uh, identified their role, mm-hmm. and they embellished in their role, mm-hmm. and uh, that what makes makes a team. Every one of us had to sacrifice something mm-hmm. uh, uh, to get there. I remember that I almost left Memphis. Really? Yeah, because well, Coach Walter was. He wouldn't let me start, uh. and uh, and he called me in. I called me in the office and Billy said, "You know what? I really don't need you to start." He said because Wes is pretty temperamental, so he said I need you to come off the bench, but you're gonna get just as much playing time if you was as you started. Mm-hmm. That little on me, I've known ten potential all junior college all American. I thought I'll play all the time. Mm-hmm. But no, they know you can't play college ball like that all the time. Right. You got to get a rest every now and then. Yeah. And so, to make a long story short, uh, he come, I started coming off the bench. Well, I've been coming off the bench all year long and having the ball. Mm-hmm. So we get to the NCAA tournament, and he says, well, Billy, he comes to the room, me and Kenan in the room. He said, Billy said, uh, I need you to do something for me. I said, what? He said, I need you to start. I said, for what? <laughs> You ain't starting me all year long. <laughs> now you're going to start me. I said, I like what I'm, I like what, no, you need to start. And that's how I wind up starting. Yeah. I mean, because you, you, you started all those games, uh, played about, what, 22, 23 minutes mm-hmm. a game average. I also noticed you averaged about two and a half, three assists a game during the NCAA tournament. Uh, you, I'm going to guess you were kind of the glue guy that, Made sure everything functioned the way it's supposed to function out there as playing guard. Well, I know one of the things I had to do when I when I got I had to sacrifice the offense and defense. Yeah. And uh, uh, so uh, and I knew where I get mine. Mine was gonna come on the fast break, mm-hmm. on steals, those those type of things. Uh, Cause we had plenty of shooters, Finch, Ronnie, Keenan, they were all shooters. Mm-hmm. So you know we just you know we we get in where we fit in it. Yeah. Um, and that's what I basically kind of. Kind of did do do my my uh, quickness and everything. I really kind of prided myself on uh, my def- defense. Uh, I usually got the toughest guard mm-hmm. whenever we played. Uh, and that was my assignment. Yeah. Uh, from the get go, uh, and that's kind of way I kind of lived. I kind of took that challenge. Uh, we're gonna get out of here, but before we go, Mr. Buford, I just want to point out that you're. Son had, has moved back to Glasgow. He's been living in Chicago uh, and took over as the boys' head coach at Glasgow High School, uh, played there. Uh, when he got that job, I noticed you were pretty excited at that press conference. How, how did you feel seeing your son take over where you had played in high school and, and where he had played most of his high school career? Well, I was, I was truly elated. It's, it's, a, it's a wonderful chance for, 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 for BJ um, to be able to um, – to build something, mm-hmm. um, 
you know, we talk quite a bit about developing the culture uh, and being patient. Um, and um, he uh, he's invested in the community. He's invested in the kids. And uh, he truly believes that he can bring a state championship back to Glasgow High School. Yeah. And he believes that. And uh, from what I've seen him and the things he's doing this summer and, and how his mental state is, that uh, it's going to be uh, it's going to be rough around here on some other teams. And in, in the next year or so, maybe next year, it's going to be kind of rough because he ain't no he ain't no joke. He he coming after some wins. Yeah. He he he, he, he he's a he's an intense individual, and uh, he's uh, a builder of men. Yeah. So I'm very very proud of him and and uh, proud of the uh, the school system for giving him a chance. That's awesome. Well, it's been Billy Buford with me. Uh, played on the Glasgow 1968 state championship team. Played in the NCAA tournament title game in '73. And this is Tell Me About It on Glasgow EPB Channel 6, the local channel. At Don Franklin, we're more than a group of car dealerships. We're hardworking, everyday people of Kentucky. We strive daily to give 110% to our customers, our employees, and our families. We are committed to providing everyone with a safe and reliable vehicle and we continue our tradition of supporting our local communities. At all 24 dealerships across Kentucky, we will treat you like family. Don Franklin Family of Dealerships, we are Kentucky. Extreme Fitness has doubled in size. Now with over 8,000 square feet of co-ed weights and an upgraded 90 degree sailing therapy pool. The Extreme Fitness Campus also holds the exclusive Extreme Fitness for Women Complex and Extreme Blend Smoothie Bar. You have to experience the variety of classes to realize the impact they have on their clients. Personal training is with the best in the business and is available and tailored to fit individuals. So start your journey today at Extreme Fitness and Health Club. James Brown back with 104.104thescore.com. Uh, back here on Tell Me About It, Glasgow EPB Channel 6, the local channel. Uh, Trevent Hayes is up at the boys' state tournament today, uh, covering a little basketball and I guess uh, talking a little basketball up there, so he's not able to join us. I do want to thank Billy Buford for coming in and telling us uh, the great stories about him growing up and playing basketball in Glasgow and then at the University of Memphis. <coughs> Excuse me there. Um, Real quick, I just wanted to wrap this show up, talk a little bit about the girls' state tournament uh, and the end of the fourth region tournament a little bit. Uh, we were, and the boys' state tournament's kicking off. Let's talk a little bit about the girls' state tournament. Bowling Green, which was the fourth region winner, uh, they went to Rupp Arena, lost in the first round to Owensboro Catholic. Uh, you know, one of, their, one of their struggles this year was scoring, especially outside shooting once Campbell got hurt. And that showed up a little bit in that game. But the thing that really showed up in that game, I think it was in the second half, Owensboro Catholic hit eight of nine three-pointers during a stretch. They may have gone eight of nine in the, in the second half. And they needed all of them. They won, won the game by two. But that was really the key, that outside shooting. And, and you know, that outside shooting sometimes will uh, neutralize the inside game uh, of a team because you're, you know, trading threes for twos. Uh, math. And then uh, Meadow Tisdale there uh, had a good game. Sonia Shelton had a good game. Bailey had a good game. But, they, you know, they couldn't trade the twos for threes. And so uh, that, that ended their run. No shock to anyone. Sacred Heart won their third consecutive state title. Uh, their only real challenge in the tournament was against George Rogers Clark. I think they beat them by two or four maybe. <clears throat> And they had a pretty tough game with them during the regular season, so there. That was the only. That was the semifinal game in the finals. Sacred Heart beat McCracken County pretty handily. <coughs> Excuse me. And then uh, the uh, they ran through McCracken in that championship game, which kind of surprised me. I, McCracken dominated their region, and I thought they would be a pretty good challenge for them, but didn't prove to be the case. And 
The thing about Sacred Heart is there are two best players. I think one's a sophomore and maybe one's a junior. And then incoming, I think, next year for them as a freshman would be one of Mayo's top players. Uh, she's played at Mayo High School, but she was a middle schooler. So they're just reloading for another run. Meanwhile, the uh, as I mentioned, the Boys State Tournament tipped off on Wednesday by the time you're watching this, which we're recording this on Wednesday. By the time we are watching this, you'll know the fate of Warren Central. They played the night game. Uh, and, you know, the bracket kind of shaped up pretty well for them to make another run to that state final game. Uh, hopefully they can pull it off. They, they did struggle some against Bowling Green in that fourth region championship game. They ended up winning in overtime on uh, a great back screen and then kind of an alley-oop layup from Villa Fuerte to uh, Cade Nunseld uh, and beat Bowling Green, I think, 52-50 in overtime of that game. Bowling Green had no seniors, so you can mark them down probably as the favorite to win the fourth region next year. Uh, before the season begins, of course. And because for Warren Central, they have, I think, five seniors uh, of their starters. Unsold is the only one who's not a senior, and he's a junior. So they're going to have to reload or mm, rebuild. They've not been rebuilding lately. They've just been reloading. So obviously, they would, they're always going to be a threat. But they uh, – Outside of that one struggle, and that would be the that's going to be the most difficult game just because those two teams that was the fourth time they played each other, they know each other very well. The second time they played each other during the regular season, they went to overtime. Uh, so the fact that that was a close game was not a shocker. I think, I think Warren Central potentially makes that run to the state championship game and hopefully brings it home this time. Very good team, one of the best teams I've ever seen in high school. All right, it's been James Brown on Tell Me About It, Glasgow EPB Channel 6, local channel. You can find it us also on the Glasgow EPB YouTube channel. We'll see you again next week.